This is the Tips for Lawyers podcast and this is episode 24 and today I wanted to give you six tricks to lead to a more productive morning. Because for me the morning is the most productive part of the day. I know for other people they prefer to work in the evenings but I find mornings energizing, I find them exciting, it's where I'm full of creativity, it's where I've got my best ideas, it's where I've got my most energy And I really like to capitalize on that, and I know a lot of people do, so I thought I'd give you six tricks. Before we get into that, our standard admin, this is the Tips for Lawyers podcast, which means you can find this episode and all of the show notes for all the previous podcasts at tipsforlawyers.com slash podcast. You can leave comments there if you want, you can subscribe to iTunes there, or you can just go directly to tipsforlawyers.com slash iTunes. If you do enjoy the podcast, whether this one or any of them, I really encourage you to leave a rating on iTunes. If you go to that iTunes link, you can leave a five-star rating and a review there. The comments do matter. I read them all and I really appreciate the time you might take to leave a comment and a positive review in iTunes. That said, let's get into our six tricks for a more productive morning. Now, I know the usual things. You know, people are going to tell you, eat a good breakfast and, you know, don't necessarily have 16 cups of coffee coffee before you even leave the house. Uh, some people will give you some other things about exercise and bringing up your endorphins and stuff like that. Look, I know all those things, um, but other people have said those and I don't need to repeat what other people do. So I'm going to give you six perhaps slightly more unique tricks that might help you out in the mornings and might help you give you some creativity, some energy, some other things you might be able to think of doing and also set you up for what is in effect a really good day. So let's have a look at our six tricks for today. The first thing I really wanted to encourage you to do is to redeem your commute. Now, what do I mean by that? Lots of people catch a bus, they might catch a train, and I suspect what you might do, because I see people doing it on my own bus trip, you might read a novel, that's fine. I suspect you have lots of time to read a novel, but you might read a novel, you might listen to music, You might spend time scrolling on Facebook. The number of people I see with their fingers wagging as they scroll down a million different posts in Facebook is pretty unbelievable these days. And I want you to think for a minute, how does that help you? What is it that does for your morning? Does it help you do better at work? Does it energize you? Does it make you feel like you've hit the ground running? Does it give you ideas? If it ticks those boxes for you, then that's fine. But for me, reading a novel, listening to music, scrolling through Facebook, none of that provides me with anything. Most of it, in fact, is just a way of killing time on the commute. So instead of killing time on the bus or the train, how about you redeem your time? Sign up to a podcast. Perhaps you're listening to this one. Uh, Sign up to a podcast about creativity, about entrepreneurship, about writing about research. There are lawyers podcasts out there where they talk about black letter law if you're actually interested in that. Get audiobooks. Audiobooks are fantastic because you can listen to those on your way there. But don't necessarily spend the time in fiction. Spend some time in non-fiction. Learn something. Fill your brain with ideas so that you can take those ideas with your morning energy and creativity and you hit the office and you go, right, how am I going to utilize what I've just learned? How am I going to take that? and use it to help a client. So that's my step number one. Take your commute. You've got time. You've normally got 15, 20, 30 minutes and use that. Use that time for something productive. Don't just kill that time. Don't waste the time. Use it for something productive. The fact is you've got plenty of time on Facebook. You've got plenty of time to read a novel. So use that time instead for something else. Use it where you can be quiet and contemplative and Use it to do something positive, perhaps journaling, perhaps listening to an audio book, perhaps listening to a a podcast that actually gives you some positive information and feedback that you can take into your day and that you can utilize. So that's my first tip. My second one is this. When you hit your desk, send one email that you don't have to send. See, so often we get into work and we start on the things we have to do. But the fact is, those are going to happen. But what about sending an email that you don't have to do? Send the thank you note that you haven't got around to doing yet. Send the note touching base with someone to see how they're going. Send a note to a client inquiring how they had 
something on the weekend. If you know your clients well enough, you might be able to inquire how their kids went in something. You might be able to touch base with a colleague. You, this might be the time where you can set up a coffee for someone later in the week or even that day. Send an email that is not mandatory. Why? Because it gives you a feeling that you've accomplished something more than the necessary. And that leads nicely into my third trick, which is to do something that is important, but not urgent. Now, I know in the last podcast I spoke about getting in control by getting on top of the most urgent things, but the reality is the urgent will always get done. The only way you will get to the important things is if you do them first. So, It might fall into the category of sending an email that you don't have to, but it might not. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's working on your marketing plan. Maybe it's finishing that article. Maybe it's getting a headline done. Maybe it's doing a podcast. Maybe it's uh, any number of other things that you haven't found the time to do once your day gets going and the phone calls start and the interruptions begin and the urgent matters start taking over. Get the important thing done first. So if you've redeemed your commute, you've sent an email that you don't have to send but would like to send, and you've done something that's important but not urgent. The next thing I wanted to encourage you to do in your morning routine once you hit the office is to do a hard thing. Perhaps you've got that advice sitting in your inbox that you're just struggling to get across the line. Perhaps you've got a difficult letter to write or a difficult phone call to make. Do that as early in the day as you can. Why? For two reasons. Firstly, if you put it off, then you'll end up putting it off to the next day again, just like you have all the times before. The second reason, though, is if you start the day by accomplishing the really hard thing that's been plaguing your mind, that's been stopping up your brain, then everything else for the day will feel less hard. I've heard it called eat that frog, uh, which I think is an old... uh, might be John Wayne or someone like that, or Mark Twain perhaps, about eating a frog being the most awful thing you're likely to do all day. And if you do it in the morning, everything else that day seems fantastic in comparison. That's what this is about. Do the hard thing, the difficult thing, the challenging thing, the thing you don't really want to do, but you know you have to. Do that and get it done. The feeling you will have with that weight off your shoulders will make you free as a bird and you will be able to accomplish things later in the day with far more efficiency and energy because you know that weight is gone off your shoulders. Next thing you might want to consider doing is before, perhaps even before some of those things I've mentioned already, take 10 minutes just to map out your day. It might involve five minutes where you just sit quietly. I love sitting quietly for a couple of minutes. doesn't happen too often, but I do enjoy doing it. Sit quietly for five minutes and see what comes to you. Then spend the next five minutes mapping out your day. Now, hard and fast plans do not work here, but that might be the time you can write your to-do list. Perhaps that's where you can jot down those important things for the next morning so that you can make sure you're ticking off on the important before the urgent gets in the way. So take 10 minutes. Plan a little bit through the day so you can tick things off. You can line through them. You can get in control of your day. And that, again, will help you avoid that feeling of stress like I talked about in podcast episode 23. You can get in control. You can take a breath. You can have a minute to stimulate your senses to get your creative juices going and to make sure you've worked through what's important to get done that day. And look, the last thing's a little bit out of left field. Take a minute at the start of your day to be deliberately and unexpectedly nice to someone. Perhaps you might like to buy the person behind you coffee in the line for no particular reason. You don't have to know them. What about a random act of kindness or a random act of generosity? What about a nice word to someone who normally you don't have too many words for at all? Be nice to someone. Starting the day with a positive, deliberate act will get you in the right mindset for a positive day, will energize you, will have you feeling good. And that's what all these things are designed to do. Take a look at the list. All these things are designed to do one of two things. Lighten the load, get your energy up, give you ideas. Okay, that's three things, but they're all in the same path. They are designed to make the rest of your day better. If you redeem your commute by listening to an audio book or listening to a podcast 
or reading a non-fiction book or learning about something, then you will be able to take that into the rest of your day and the rest of your week. If you send an email that you don't have to do, you know you are moving beyond the status quo. You are advancing and that gives you a feeling of positive attitude towards your day and energizes you. If you do the important thing, it has the same ultimate effect. You know you are advancing beyond what needs to be done into what can be done and you are starting to realize your potential. If you do the hardest thing you can think of to do first, then everything else in the day feels like a breeze and you will cycle through those things far more easily than you would if you hadn't done the hardest thing first. If you take 10 minutes to map out your day, you know exactly what you need to do. Sure, things get in the way, but you have a plan. You need to be flexible, but you can map out your day and you can tick those things off. And again, you have that sense of control. You have that sense of peace. You have that sense of accomplishment. And finally, being positive, being deliberately positive, deliberately generous, but deliberately nice will put you in the right mindset. When you're talking to clients, when the difficult conversations come up, you will have a far more positive attitude. So those are the six things I wanted to encourage you to do for a productive morning. If you want to exercise or avoid coffee or have a good breakfast or not check email before you get to work, that's fine. Do those things too. They're not bad advice. But I wanted to cover a few different things and give you some different ideas. So get out there. Try some of these out. They do work. I use them myself. And they leave me energized for the day every time I do them. That's it for Tips for Lawyers episode 24. Head over to iTunes and leave a review. A little bit of a shorter episode today, but there's no real problems with that. Sometimes I like to do them short. Sometimes I like to do them a bit longer. Have a great week. I'll see you soon.